Welcome back to Dicking Around Outdoors. Now, historically, my camp cooking set was cast iron. I love cooking in cast iron. We use it all the time at home. But if you think about it, if you take a five quart lodge Dutch oven, a 10 and a quarter quart lodge, sorry, a 10 and a quarter inch lodge fry pan, and my pro griddle, you're talking over 30 pounds of cookware. When I'm packing in the Jeep, I don't want to do that. That's too much weight to commit to the cookware. But I think I found something that has the potential to help solve the weight issue and still cook with all the benefits of cast iron. I'm talking about carbon steel, and a lot of people advocate carbon steel for camp cooking. My problem is, however, is in the packing. Now this is the Matford Bourgeois pan that we use at home. It is a carbon steel skillet, but look at the handle. This is a traditional handle style for carbon steel pans. And for me, this is a non-starter when it comes to trying to pack it in my cook kit. So I've not taken carbon steel with me. Although I love the way it cooks, it seasons like cast iron, it cooks like cast iron, but it weighs less. We found something that we think we really want to try. It is an OXO Outdoor carbon steel skillet. Now this is the middle range. They make an eight, a 10, and a 12 inch. This is the 10 inch pan. It comes pre-seasoned. As you can see, it's black. In fact, I've never purchased a carbon steel pan that's quite this black, so I'm not sure what they've done, but it still does need to be seasoned. Looking at the thickness, it's about half the thickness of the Matt for Bourgeois pan that I showed you. So I'm curious to see if it holds up without warping but it does solve the packing issue because the handle is removable. That's what really got me thinking about giving this pan a test. The remo take the handle off, you can pack it away nicely. It's about a pound lighter than the 10 and a quarter inch Lodge cast iron pan, so it saves some weight. So once we get all this tested and use it, we're gonna come back, we're gonna show you what we think. So make sure you don't go anywhere because if this pan works as well as I hope it does, it could be a real great addition to your camp cooking. It's time to start testing this new OXO carbon steel camp skillet. Before we start the testing, we went ahead and ran it through two sessions of our standard cast iron and carbon steel seasoning process. And we're gonna test this pan really for three things. One is how well it takes the seasoning, how nonstick it gets, and really important to me in this test, given the thickness of the carbon steel, does it warp? So the first thing we're gonna do is cook up some leftover potato skins. Just wanna start the seasoning process going, see how much sticking we get. So that's gonna be our first thing. We often save our potato skins so that we can season cast iron and carbon steel. Just makes a cheap way to do some cooking in them. All right, we're getting some waves in the oil, so we're gonna go ahead and put these in. And we're not gonna try to just sear the crap out of these. We're really just gonna let them slowly cook. We want to give the pan a chance to uh, absorb some of that oil and just show us what it can do. So we're just in the middle of cooking these potatoes, but one thing that's already impressed me is the fact that it looks like the pan is heating pretty evenly. And that may be a function of the thickness of the carbon, but if you can see, you don't have this real hot concentric ring right above the burner, which on a lot of pans you get. So, so far, this thing's looking like it's working very well. Look at this absolutely no sticking at all of these potatoes which is pretty rare in a new pan well i must say that these potato skins have cooked up exceptionally well again we had no sticking at all the fire didn't have to be turned up high it heated efficiently so we're going to go ahead and take these out and put it through some more tests for the next test we're going to stick with the theme of having a little extra oil in there it's always a good idea when you're first using carbon steel or cast iron. And we are going to fry up some zucchini fritters. Got a nice hot oil. Time to flip these things, see how they're browning. Oh my gosh, those look fantastic. And here is our end result, some perfectly fried fritters. I think the pan did a great job in the shallow fry category. That sizzle sounds phenomenal. We're gonna use the propane stove today just to kind of shake up the fuel sources to see if the different heat levels that are generated by these stoves make a difference. 
Well, I'm glad we're cooking under the cover here of the porch. The rain just started. This bacon is done. It cooked beautifully. We didn't have to use very high heat at all on this stove. Like often, you have to rotate the bacon a bit. Same with cast iron to make sure that you get everything done at the same time. But it cooked beautifully. And as you can see, these eggs are just sliding around in that pan. That is really, really impressive for a brand new pan. And these are frying up nicely like they would in cast iron. You got a little crispy on the edges, which I like. Camera lady does not like. This thing is cooking exceptionally well. And as I said, the eggs just sliding around in there. There's nothing sticking. This is really impressive. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, give pancakes a try. See if it can do a little subtle cooking. It's a bit hard to get the pan temperature right today because we are working with a heck of a wind. But uh, we're going to give it a go. We're going to make sure we get a nice golden brown crust and that we don't have any sort of hot spots. All right, this looks ready to flip. The edges are dried up a bit and looking crispy. And we've got the bubbles bursting on the top. So let's see how it looks. Well, that's a good looking pancake, I think. Got a little bit here on the edges that uh, didn't get quite as brown. Given the size of the pan, and the fact we have to use the windscreens, it's kind of hard to get this centered on the burner. But regardless, it'll give you an idea of how the heat's disseminating around the pan. But again, we're working with extremely windy conditions today. And let's see how the other side did. I moved it just a bit in the pan to get it centered a bit more over the burner. And it looks good. I mean, I think that looks like a good pancake. So I'm going to call the pancakes done and a success. All right, whenever I think of cast iron or carbon steel, the first thing that comes to mind is searing meat. So for our last test, we've got a nice pork chop that we've sous vide and we are going to put it on the pan to sear it and give it a nice crust, or at least that's the plan. We've got the pan good and hot, so we're gonna go ahead, get some oil in there, get this pork chop on and see how this pan sears. All right, let's see how side two did. Oh my gosh, that is a good looking pork chop. I would say on the searing front, this pan does a great job. I got no complaints at all about the job that this thing did. So I think it lived up to the carbon steel's reputation. It didn't seem to lose heat when I flipped it and have any trouble browning the second side. So I would call this good. All right, so we finished our testing now of this OXO Outdoors carbon steel skillet. If you recall, when we started this review, we had three goals in mind. One, we wanted to see if this skillet would take on a seasoning. Number two, we wanted to see if it would warp over high heat, over a fire. And number three, we wanted to see if it cooked evenly. Now, even on a carbon steel and cast iron skillet is relative because neither one of them is a great conductor of heat but as even as you can get, that's what we were looking for. So let's talk about the first thing, seasoning. When this pan first arrived, it had a seasoning on it that was unlike anything I'd ever seen on a carbon steel skillet. It almost reminded me of a nonstick coating. In fact, after the first two tests where absolutely nothing stuck at all, I called OXO to ask them what, the, what this seasoning was and if it did have any traditional non-stick and they ensured me that it didn't that it was just a seasoning but again I'd never seen anything like it before but as we cooked in this and as we got it particularly over the fire and I apologize our video got corrupted but we did put this over a fire and it was running about 900 degrees the seasoning did start to give way and that's exactly what you want to see happen if you can tell the inside of the pan is a bit mottled which means it's starting to take on a more traditional coating of seasoning that is building up over time as we cook in it. And that's exactly what you want to see. This pan remains very non-stick, although it's now allowing a little bit of fond to develop, which is what you want to have happen. And it still remains extremely easy to clean. Number two, did it warp? As I said, we had this over a fire and it was running about 900 degrees, the embers were, and we have absolutely no warping. So what that tells me is they got a good 
thickness on this steel to keep it from warping, but still keep it as light as possible. And number three, how was the cooking? Was it even? And I would say as a carbon steel skillet, this cooks very evenly. As you saw in the pancake test, there was one edge that didn't get as brown as, as the others, but that could be due to the extreme wind that we had. Uh, it was terribly windy, and this pan cooks as evenly as any other carbon steel pan that I've had. If that is a concern, you can just rotate the pan on the fire to make sure there are no hot spots. So overall, I would say this is an extremely good skillet. It's a fantastic cooking skillet, and I think it's something that's great for camping. Now, let's talk about this handle. One of the things, in fact, the main reason I decided to give this a try was that the handle was removable. And for packing during camping, I want this handle to come off because I don't need a long carbon steel handle on my skillet. So when you're transporting this, you just insert the handle back on backwards and it gets out of the way. It fits inside the skillet and it holds firm. When you want to use it, you just unhook it, put it in the traditional way, and it clamps into place and there's no problem. But, OXO, who made the decision not to round off the edges of this handle? On all my other skillets, even ones with flat handles, the edges of the handle are slightly rounded so that when you grip it, you're not gripping a sharp edge. This handle, candidly, it stinks, Oxo. It's got sharp edges so when you lift it up, it cuts into your hand. It is not really comfortable. Now that's not a problem if you put a silicone sleeve on it or if you're using a pot holder. Oxo, you could have done better with this, but that's not gonna stop me from recommending this pan because there are ways around it, like I said. But as a cooking skillet, this will last you a lifetime. It cooks wonderfully. It's, it's a wonderful buy. It's $49.95 at REI. To my knowledge, you can only buy it at REI and only if you're a member of REI, but that's freebie. So become a member, buy this skillet. You will not be sorry as long as you know how to take care of it. And if you need to know how to take care of cast iron or carbon steel, just check my video out here. So. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful. If you like the content and you like gear reviews, check out my playlist on gear reviews for camping. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please take a moment to hit that sub button in the lower right hand corner. And take care and we'll see you outdoors.